All right, welcome everybody. Today we've got a pair of Ferragamos. We are going to clean, condition, and protect. These have wonderful broguing on the cap toe here. Have a leather sole that's very well stitched. Very quality uh, item here. If you see them at thrift stores, buy them because they are amazing. Just make sure that the uh, step is not spongy, you know, and then you got a good pair of shoes. Probably for pretty cheap, too. So, yeah. Alright, let's clean them up. And first thing we want to do, take our dropper brush, just go over the entire body. Just real light, just real easy. Okay? going to add a bit of leather lotion. This is by Cadillac. I mean, very, very good quality products. Um, not only is it the least expensive on Amazon, I believe it's the best, too. It has a bit of a cleaning agent in, within it, so it helps to break up any old polish on there, any dirt, any soot, any whatever it's on the leather, it'll help bring up. And this is my saddle soaping stage. So instead of using saddle soap, I use a leather lotion. Helps clean and condition at the same time. Saves a lot of time, saves a lot of mess. Don't have to use water. All good things. really helps if you're trying to be a mobile shoe shiner. You're uh, not going to have too much in your kit, you know? Let's wait. But even if you're just shining your shoes at home, you know, maybe you don't want to stain the rug. Maybe you don't want to make a huge mess or something. So if you can avoid using saddle soap, better. Now, if these were caked in mud or if they were really, really dirty, then yeah, I, I would uh, suggest using saddle soap first to really clean. But rarely, even I rarely get a pair of shoes that's that dirty. And even in those instances, I still use this. I just use a little bit more, a little more elbow grease, a little more time. Okay, so we've prepared it. We've buffed it out. We've taken off the excess. Now we're going to do a deeper clean with pure polish. Uh, the cleaner conditioner right here, amazing product. All it is, is um, orange oil, coconut oil, and beeswax. That's what this stuff is in there. You can see I've used the hell out of it. I'm gonna use firm pressure. Put it up against something like a desk or a... And if you have cedar shoe trees, you can put the cedar shoe trees in the shoe while you're doing this. And it helps out quite a bit. The cloth I'm using is just an auto detail rag, microfiber. Very, very good for shiny shoes. They recommend other towels will leave a lot of little tiny uh, strings everywhere so we picked up a good amount of old polish and dirt just from that little bit wipe it off the rest of the way get off any excess product This can be done fairly quickly, you know, 10, 15 minutes, this shoe shine can be done. But if you're just starting out, take your time. Don't rush it. Next, we're going to add a little bit of color and conditioner with their cream polish, pure polish products, cream polish, the Oregon, Oregon Pinot. Pinot, Pinot. 
however you pronounce that. Just move it on the tip of your finger. Small circles. We're gonna do it all around the article. Get you a better angle there. So hope everyone's day is going well. Thanks for clicking on the video. If this is useful or you're enjoying it, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, follow my Instagram at Craig the Shoe Shiner. Love to help you out on your shoe shining journey. Whether it, you want me to do it for you or learn from me, hope I can be useful. We really want to get into these creases too, on the vamp and on the sides. Make sure you get all it in there. Kind of smooth it out with our hand all around. Make sure it's not, we don't get any hard lines in the leather. Use our horsehair brush. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Good, uh, I guess, bristle count on these. It matters too. Want a thick, soft brush. You don't want to be using nylon for this because you can scratch the leather. We just want to move the product around. Make sure all the polish gets into all the little nooks and crannies and into the actual pores of the leather. That's what we're doing right now. That's why we brush. Let's just smooth it all out. Work it into the leather. All right. So we are done with the conditioning portion. Put our lids back on. We've got Oxblood, Lincoln Stain Wax, and we have Marine Cordovan. Which should we put on first? Let's actually do the Marine Cordovan because we have a bit of a burnishing on the toes and the heels of this, and this is a darker one, so we're going to do that. And then we can go over the top of it with Oxblood. Should work out just fine. So we're not going to use this color on the entire body, we're just going to use it on the toe and the heel. And actually we can use it on the edges as well, because that's a darker color. Putting polish on the edges here is good because it will protect better. A lot of guys will use just your, um, your edge dressing, which helps, and it does stain the, the color back to the edges, of course, but in this case, it's not really needed. So you don't want to waste product, you don't want to waste time in doing that step you know, um, we want to do what's right for the leather. That's what we're doing right now. Do what makes sense. Now I'm kind of using firm pressure to do this. Me medium to firm pressure on the areas that really want to get that color into. And then I kind of taper off using really light pressure on the edges to kind of feather it all in feather it with the with the fingers just like this no you um, have a little bit of product and then you just really lightly kind of blend it it's like magic
All right, let's brush that out. We're gonna brush the entire article because we also want to blend this darker part with the lighter part, right? We don't want it a straight line. We want it blended so that it gradually brings the color out. Brushing will really help to do that. 100% horsehair brush. Unless you're cleaning the article, 100% horsehair, very, very good. That's all you need. Now, if you want more buffing action to help shine the leather, you can give a you can have a softer bristle than um, than horsehair. But for for right now, we don't really need that. All right, ox blood. We're just going to do one layer of ox blood over the whole thing. I like to kind of prepare the, uh, the can a little bit. So if I'm doing the entire article, I kind of split my fingers up a little bit like this and go in a wider area all the way around. And that helps save time. Helps me get to all the areas. I think it also helps smooth out the product as well when I do that. So I just do one finger and I'm kind of working in here and there, here and there, here and there. It, uh, it tends to concentrate in that area. And we want kind of a sweeping effect on this article here. And yeah, we'll get the toe too, just a little bit helps blend the colors together when we do this. All right, we can put that one away. Yes, sir. Brush it out. And our last layer will be with our Pure Polish High Shine. And for the High Shine, you want to focus on all the different hard points of the leather. We're not going to put it on the vamp. It's really the toe box and the heel is where you want that high shine wax. This has got stiffer waxes. And if you put it in a thick enough layer on the vamp, on the vamp right here, when you go to crease it, when you step, it'll kind of break apart and look, it'll look bad. <laughs> It won't look good, okay? And this is a neutral, so we don't have to worry about it changing the color of the article at all. down get rid of any hard lines if you see any hard lines you can kind of rub into it a little bit and then smooth it out with your hands ready for brushing so if you're only doing one layer of that we can put it down and away I'm going to brush the entire article again just to kind of blend it all together and make sure I got all the right places too. I'm not missing any parts even from previous layers in case I miss something when I get the whole area. Quality control. Alright, now comes the buffing. I use 
a microfiber kind of spandex material, what they might use if they, if you were to make bicycle shorts or something like that. I got this at Walmart like six years ago for, I don't know, a dollar a yard or something. And it is amazing. I have a lot of this stuff at home because I bought a lot of it thinking I might need a lot. But the wonderful thing about this product is that it lasts a very long time. And I can go from a black pair of shoes to a white pair of shoes with no color transfer. Okay, this is a really important piece of tool in your kit. If you're going to be a shoe shiner or if you're going to, if you have multiple pair that are different colors, you want something like this uh, as opposed to all the different cotton rags or cotton buffers that traditionally are used. This is wonderful. The only thing about it is you can't pop it like you can with the, uh, the, uh, the cotton cloth, you know. If you're noticing, we're not using any water to do this either. A lot of shoe shiners out there say, you have to have water, have to have water. No, you don't. Sorry. I guess I figured out a way you, <laughs> you don't need water. Um, but I get just as good a shine. And um, no water has been used in this entire shine. My shines last three, four, five weeks with regular use. Yours can too if you follow this tutorial. Okay, so can it be shinier? Yes, of course. We can go longer, we can add more layers. You can add as many layers as you like. If you're looking for a quick, easy shoe shine, follow this. Appreciate you clicking on my video, guys. If you learned something, leave a like and share it with your friends too. More people need to know about shoe shining. Let's spread the word. Thank you.